1981, I experienced hemorrhaging during a surgical operation, a serious hemorrhage, which resulted in me dying. I only realized this after the fact, of course, but during the time while I was probably lying flat on a bed, my spirit and my soul rose up towards God, whom I could not see, but from whom I felt an extremely strong sense of power and love. I encountered the love of God and met with God's love in such an extraordinary and powerful way that in a sense I was running towards him. I realized that I was dying and yet at the same time I was full of joy because I was running towards this love and it was a completely wonderful moment and I knew for sure that I did not want to go back. And I was aware that I was dying and yet, like in a dialogue, I knew that it was God himself who reminded me as I was running towards him that I had three children and really I believe that I felt a, a big sense of disappointment at first as I realized of course I can't go now and I said to God who was right there with me I can't leave now I have three young kids and I felt really very sad that my rush towards him had to wait and I was torn between my duty to stay and the deep desire to continue my running towards God and little by little during the silence in which God was in some way challenging me I felt that he was waiting waiting for me to make a decision and during this time I understood that I needed to stop running to him and that I had to go back and even that I had to ask God about it so I said Lord I must go back I have to go back as my work is not finished I must go back my desire to go back became stronger and stronger to such a degree that I began to distance myself from the initial feeling of disappointment and truly embrace my wish to return and take care of my children, so much so that during this silent time while God was waiting for me to respond, I wanted to be more convincing. And so I pleaded with him, I must come back, I really must. And if you wish, when I have finished my work, you can bring me back. But for now, I need to care for my young children. I didn't realize at the time, but I was in some way trying to negotiate a contract, which he hadn't asked me to do, but in which I gave him a condition that he could take me back when I had finished my work. But the Lord hadn't asked anything of me. He hadn't given me any conditions. If he sent me back to life, it was freely, generously, and offered free of any conditions. I realized this much later, but only quite recently, about three years ago, that I had in effect made an agreement with death when I said, you can take me back and I would be ready to die when I have finished my work. So the years went by. This all took place in 1981 and now we're in 2016 in 2013 or, or rather 2014 sorry just two years ago my youngest son was married and after seeing all of my sons getting married as the last one was married I thought to myself oh, Lord I have almost finished my work my last son will be married I will have soon finished my work and you can take me back. I had this internal dialogue as though this was a necessary condition representing obedience to God. At least that is what I thought. But I wasn't obeying God because he hadn't asked me for anything. And so in 2014, in January of 2014, 
my last son was married. And at that moment, on the 19th of January, 2014, while accompanying him to the altar, I said, God, I have completely finished my work and feel that if you wish, you can take me back now. Barely a month later, I was diagnosed with breast cancer. So I thought to myself, God, you are really working quickly. You are making good on the promise I made that you can take my life now. Meanwhile, I called one of my colleagues, a pastor in Paris, and told him this news of my diagnosis. He told me, come to Paris and we will pray about this. Three days later, I was with him in Paris, and he had already prayed for me with the aim of praying for my healing. And then he told me something astounding. He said that God had told him that I had made a false contract. What false contract? I have no idea, he said, but you've made a false promise. It was God who told me so. I still could not see it. I had no idea what false contract I had made. Let's pray. As we prayed at the table in his small office, I prayed myself and said, God, please show me what false contract I have made that has resulted in this cancer that I'm experiencing. I had barely finished the words in less time than it has taken me to tell you. Suddenly, I remembered that in 1981, I had told God that when my work was finished, he would be able to take me back. Suddenly, after just 10 seconds of prayer, I realized that I had been wrong for more than 33 years. This had not been a contract with God and that God was not involved in this contract with me. But rather, I alone, through my words, had made an alliance, not with God, but with death. And it became obvious after just 10 seconds of prayer that for 33 years, I had thought from time to time, actually fairly often, that nothing had changed. I genuinely believed that I had made an agreement with God. This short prayer was a revelation. God revealed in just 10 seconds that the enemy, you could say, had blinded me for 33 years. Of course, I repented from this false contract that I thought I had made with God and from the truth that it had been a contract with death, the spirit of death. And so I asked for forgiveness. I truly repented with all my heart and I was extremely shocked by my blindness, which had been mine alone for 33 years. So there it is. I underwent the operation, but there was no more talk of cancer, and everything was quite normal, because the false contract had now been broken. I was pardoned in the name of Jesus, and there was no longer any spirit of death with any power over me.